in uh, 2008. I had just finished the restoration of our 1952 MGTD uh, sports car and was looking around for another project. Uh, I had worked on a dairy farm that my uncle had in upstate New York and he had John Deere tractors. I had, uh, at 16 years old, I got to drive a, a John Deere 40 and a John Deere 50, both two-cylinder tractors that uh, had the distinctive putt-putt sound when he ran them. And uh, I found a John Deere Model B W uh, for sale out in Chittenango, New York. And I went out to see the tractor and uh, uh, pick it up on a trailer that I had borrowed. And I messed up in measuring the trailer and the tractor didn't quite fit. <clears throat> so we ended up having to uh, drive home without it and make arrangements to have it uh, picked up and delivered here to Wilmington, Mass. Uh, where we uh, unloaded it and uh, started doing some work on it. Uh, I would wanted the tractor for my son and his wife who uh, have a couple of horses and uh, I thought if I put a bucket loader on it it would make a nice tractor to move horse manure around with. <clears throat> and having a bucket loader on the tractor I really wanted to have the wide front end uh, available. So uh, it made a, an interesting project and uh, You'll see here in the, this movie uh, some of the things we went through putting it together. And finally, here we are checking out the tractor. Hillsdale and we've just picked up the uh, 45W bucket loader and all the parts that go with it and uh, this fella here helping us is Mike Melnick who sold us the uh, loader we gotta blame him for that <laughs> we take a look at some of Mike's tractors here he's got a, a Model G that he's restoring working on I get back far enough. Messy shot. There we go. 
There's even parts of new green on it. Well, I painted some parts before I, I'm going to take it in to get it all painted, so uh -huh. it's easier than instead of tearing, uh, tearing everything all apart. Over here we have an unstyled A model, which is uh, kind of an interesting machine. And he does tractor pulls with this. And we come out here, and uh, I don't know what this is or was, but it was a John Deere at one time. It was touch and go for a few days. And then over in here is a tractor my Uncle Bud used to own, only he had a narrow front end version of it. This is a, a 50 that somebody has painted with yellow on it to make it look like something else, but it's, it's really a 50. What do you got in behind the 50 That's here, the Mike? 630. That's the 630, huh? Yep. Climb right up on the wood there. That's a, it's got some beef to it. Oh, yeah. That's I a, could start that one. Uh huh. That one starts nice. Visions, huh, Roy? Yeah. <laughs> John Deere. There's a John Deere corn planter in the back. Is that right? Yeah. Oh yeah, we got a corn planter back here. Neat. Thank you for doing that. You get quite a collection. Not bad. <laughs> Not too bad. I, I can't figure out what's wrong with this one. This one I tried to it this morning and it wouldn't start. I don't know why. It should have this. I'll have to send a copy of this to my Uncle Bud who had the 50. He's uh, <laughs> this one right here. Ah. It's the one I used to run when I... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, it says 15. I don't know yeah. what the problem is. But it wasn't painted with that yellow stripe, Jane. It was all green. Ah. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Oh, yeah. That's the uh, the setup for the... Uh, for the loader. For the loader, huh? Well, see, here's how the... Uh, how it's... Oh, yeah. See how it's attached? Now, I thought... That when you run the loader off of the, the pump back here, you use the power troll handle as the loader lever. But it has this separate this unit. This has got a separate one, so. Huh. And and that doesn't go with the loader, huh? That separate one like that? that? That's separate, yeah. Okay. And this has got the wide front end on it. See how much I'm learning? Yeah, there you go. Well, that's why the loader is a W. Oh. That came with it. It was for the wide front oh, end. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, and, and and the wide front ends are a lot more valuable than the narrow front ends. I know I paid a little more for the one I got because of that. Does uh, it have a square or wide or uh, round front end? Is it square like this or is no, it round? It's round. It's round. Okay. Right. Why is See, this? <coughs> this this uh, wide front will fit right on up to a seven thirty. Uh huh. No, the the one on the B is different than this. Do you it's have it's round. There, Roy, of the uh, first one. Don't you have that on? There I do. Top? I do. You could show it, show them that. Okay. No, you're still on McDonald Road, believe it or not. Okay, now, you, now you're coming up on my place. I can see your truck. Yep, I'm looking right at you with the camera on it. <laughs> you want to probably take a right here, which will let you back into my driveway. Yeah, I usually pull. I usually pull down to the right there and then back in. Are you going to be able to do that? You finally made it. <laughs> you had a tough day, Rich. I gotta tell you, this tractor has been real reluctant to get out here. Oh, 
I guess everything. We went out with a trailer to pull it out here, and we couldn't get her on the trailer. I got I got a battery and a set of cables. I'm going to come out. We're going to try and start her. We'll be able to drive her right off as she'll run. That'll be the easiest thing. Otherwise, we'll pull it off with the Jeep. That'd be just easy. Just pull it right around, right off with the Jeep. <laughs> Want to do that? Yeah. Instead of trying to run it? Because I tell you, when you truck them, usually they got fuel problems on top of anything else. Yeah. This shakes gas into the carb, and you just do not suck that crap in. Okay. You're better off to drain your fuel bowl and make keep it out of the carb if you can. Okay. I mean, you can do it if you have to. But. All right. Let me go get the Jeep. I'll throw the hitch on it, and we'll pull it out of there. You got something to pull with, or do I need chains? Oh, or? I got plenty of chains. <laughs> okay. We'll get that. Well, Saturday, June 24th. And I just got back from a business trip, so I really haven't had too much time to play with the John Deere. But as you can see, I got it running. Had to go get the camera. Just listen to her, huh? I think we got her past the point where she's going to backfire. See if we can run her up. Oh, yeah. fuel off here and we're just waiting for it to stop. They say in the manual this is the correct way to shut it off. Get in here, cut down on the fuel panel. And, uh, she's running a little better than she was the first time I saw her, but she's still got a ways to go. Still sucking a little fuel there. Well, it's August and uh, finally got the MG all finished up, so I'm now working on the tractor. What you're looking at here is the magneto, which I've discovered was the reason that the tractor doesn't like to start when you're using a 6 volt battery on it. Uh, this spring, right here is the impulse coupler spring, and it's broken. When it's working properly, it's supposed to look like this, all wound up inside the uh, the drive lug uh, cap on the back of the magneto. And its job is to uh, wind up and spin the uh, magneto with authority as it pops through at slow speed with the 6-volt battery start. And, uh, of course, it just wasn't able to do that, so we weren't able to get sparked. When we threw a 12 volt battery on it, occasionally it would spin just fast enough to get a fi firing out of it. And uh, once it fired, it would spin it up and it would run. Uh, not great, needs some carburetor work yet. But once I get done with uh, putting this magneto back together, we should be able to start the tractor uh, reliably. And then we'll work on the carburetor next. Well, it's August 20th. And as you can see, I've got the tractor running. She's a little quieter than she was before. And the reason for that is I've rebuilt the magneto. And all of a sudden now the timing is correct. That's a rebuilt white old magneto here. And with the correct timing, even though the carburetor probably needs a little work, the tractor seems pretty happy. Let's climb up on it. See if we can get a feel for how she's running right now. And yeah, we'll release the brake. Put her in the second gear. Pull the brakes up. And now, even with it idling, she has some power.
Sounds a whole lot better than when she first arrived. And now she can be started on the 6 volt battery. We don't have to jump her on the 12 volt. She seems real happy with the uh, with the outcome. Carburetor probably still needs cleaning and adjusting, which I'm gonna do, but this is uh, a real happy breakthrough. Very good. We'll put the tarp on her and put her away for the night. Well, it's October. The weather's cooling down. It's a good time to move indoors with the projects. And uh, I've been working on the sheet metal grill for the front of the John Deere. And uh, this section in here. Uh, was kind of porous and rusted through so I welded the patch in and we bashed all the dents out of it got a few shallow dents here we got some bondo in and uh, she's actually looking pretty good at this point in the uh, rusted area we got uh, fiberglass uh, on top of the welded patch so that should be strong going forward we shouldn't have any issues with that it's all been sandblasted down She's ready for primer and uh, just kind of stand back here take a little look around the shop here the equipment and work area and over here we have the other side that's all done ready for primer you get the uh, nose cap already to be primed out. Again this one has uh, some fiberglass in the bottom area that's been welded and patched and uh, hopefully we get all these dents that were up in the grill section here so we won't be able to see those when it's painted. And then the radiator grill took that out today and that's waiting to go into the sandblaster but it was frozen solid and I managed to get it apart and to the point here if I think if I get my hand in there we can see it yeah it's just uh, starting to open up here there we go get it wide open so anyhow 
I got some ideas on how to improve on the bearing surface of that so it'll move freely. No porosity in the rust, just a little bit of rust in the base here, no holes. So when I sandblast and prime that, we should be able to save that whole thing. Well, it's uh, Thursday, November the 13th, and continuing process progress on the uh, sheet metal parts. This is now in uh, sanding primer, and uh, all the dents and porosity have been filled. And we're finally to a point here where I'm ready this weekend if the weather will cooperate to uh, actually paint some green. Decided that we're going to use uh, DuPont Emron, a two-part polyurethane enamel that holds up well to the weather in case the tractor has to sit outside some. And uh, hopefully with the weather cooperating we'll be spraying some on Sunday. And then these parts will look uh, pretty decent. I couldn't resist. We've already got a set of decals to go on it, so after we get the green on the, the grills here, we'll be able to put the uh, the B in the circle into the uh, into these panels, and then the the nose medallion uh, that has a uh, a John Deere letter goes across the front of it, the name John Deere. Now uh, we get the MGs put away for the winter here, but in the meantime, we got a few. Uh, tractor parts hanging up here that are uh, ready to be sprayed green. This is a screen that goes in under the uh, under the radiator that was pretty well rusted out and made a new one. And this is a cooling baffle that again that was fairly porous so I made a new one of those. This is the crank uh, that opens and closes the radiator shutter. It's actually a, a bell crank these are the new bearing surfaces ready to uh, be used on the on the shutter system this is the frame for the radiator shutter and hanging down over here is the radiator shutter itself all in primer ready to be painted green and everything's all freed up nice so that we can open and close the shutters properly. When it's all assembled and like I said before I have a, a set of nylon uh, bearings to go top and bottom on those so it should open and close nicely. So all the rust is gone on all those parts and everything's set up for for Sunday when we paint our first coat of green and over here we've got a gallon of Imron with DuPont 262X which is John Deere green and it's uh, ready to go. It's uh, November 18th. Starting to get cold outside so I'm working on some indoor projects. So what we've got here is the generator that uh, I've taken apart. Everything seems to be in good shape. I took a, a lathe cut on the uh, armature on the commutator. It looks all good. The brush is in real good shape. Nice set of, uh, nice set of brushes here. Plenty of beef on those. Uh, voltage regulator. The inside looks pretty good, but the outside of it is uh, is corroded and nasty. So rather than fool with it, I think I'm just going to go get a new one on the voltage regulator. This is the uh, the core for the uh, generator. It's been sandblasted and primed with zinc chromate, ready for paint. This is the original guard for the uh, the brush area here. I made today a nice stainless steel one. This is the original latch. I saved the latch. That was stainless steel. So that's going to look nice. Uh, the original one was shiny it turns out. If you look inside here where it was riveted you can still see the plating. So at one time this rusty old hunk of metal uh, actually was a shiny piece like the one I made here. Only this being stainless steel isn't going to rust. And it's November 19th, and uh, last night I painted some of the first green parts. This is the radiator shutter, and uh, we got that so that everything opens and closes pretty nicely. So we're going to have that assembled here in a few days. 
put back together with nylon bushings that I uh, got for it. A bunch of other parts hanging up here. Over on this side, we got the uh, radiator grills. Came out pretty nice. This is a DuPont Imron, which is a lat and enamel uh, product. It uh, it goes on, gives a pretty nice shine. The only thing is, if you do get a run, you're pretty much going to live with it because you can't rework it like the uh, two-part urethane uh, finishes, like Chroma One or Chroma Base, Chroma Color. But it doesn't look too bad at this point. I'd be happy with that as a finish on a tractor. Well, it's November 21st, and this is the nose medallion. We've got our decals in place, the first application of decals. It's starting to look like uh, a John Deere tractor part. And here we have our Model B decals on both nose grills. So it's starting to feel like we're actually getting underway with this project. Well, it's February and I've started to uh, do some work on the tractor here because I finally finished putting a, another transmission into Bugsy. This is the steering shaft. Get the steering wheel off of it and the worm gear up this end looks pretty good. It's got a lot of grease on it. They greased it rather than oil it the way a lot of people do now. Here's a there's a little Bugsy all covered up for the winter. She's got a, a new transmission in her. Here's the old one over here. This one had pretty badly chipped teeth. And uh, here's the old air intake off the tractor. Got that off today. Uh, somebody had butchered that up pretty well. So if we walk out here, you can see we got a bit of snow, although today's 50 degrees and it's melting. And uh, over here is my new uh, closure for the for the tractor. Jane laughs. She gave it to me for Christmas. I call it my man shelter for man tent. And uh, get a little better picture of it from around the side here. It's built by uh, Shelter Logic, and uh, gee, this works out really nice for keeping the tractor out of the weather. I come over here. It is slippery. Come inside. Got the hood off the tractor today. As you can see, we got plenty of room in here on either side to work on her. I'm just fitting the new air intake stack on her. Nice to have that. I got a muffler I'm bidding on on eBay, and the muffler that came off it is sitting on the ground. That's not a correct muffler. That's some kind of aftermarket. And somebody's buggered up the base here. You're supposed to undo these four bolts on the base, and uh, the new muffler bolts on on that flange. But to do that, you really need to take the hood off the tractor, which we have. Uh, somebody instead cut the sheet metal in the hood and put a clamp on to this piece and attach this old muffler to it. So we get all that done. The muffler and the air intake will be correct. Uh, I got the whole front end apart. Down cellar I got a new set of tie rods I made up for it. I've ordered some new tie rod ends. I'm trying right now to uh, loosen this up so I can move it in one hole. She's kind of fighting me on that. I got a bunch of penetrating oil in there. We're letting it do its work. I may have to heat that with a torch. I had to cut this off with a torch today to get the clamp off of that. All in all, radiator looks like it's in good shape. We've got a broken flange on the, uh, this is all the acorns that were up inside by the fuel tank. We've got a broken flange on the manifold in the back here, which is why the exhaust leaks on it. You see on the frame where the exhaust has been leaking. So I got to get a new manifold for it. And uh, make the new manifold and the new muffler will go a long ways to getting things fixed up. 
I'm going to put a new neck on the uh, on the radiator cap. I don't know if you can see it's porous here, so we're going to need a new new piece for that. That uh, shouldn't be too difficult to replace. So we're making progress. The old girl's all tucked away from the winter here. Now uh, here's the hood and fuel tank. Get that off today. She's gonna need a little bit of work, but not too bad. Everything here is salvageable. Gonna have to do a little patch welding in where things are kind of corroded through here and there, but not too bad overall for a 1950. This is where they cut away the sheet metal in order to put the muffler on, the aftermarket muffler on. I'm going to have to weld a patch in this area here and clean that up. Do a little bit of metal forming in here with they, they managed to distort that. But all of that's workable. Well, we get the hood upside down here. The tank is over here. The tank is in pretty good shape. There's a baffle right next to it on the left that goes under the tank. Reasonable shape. Needs a little bit of patch welding, not too bad. The uh, hood has some uh, some issues here. You can see I've been taking Bondo out of it. Didn't expect that much Bondo in the hood, but uh, managed to pound out some of the worst dents so far. And uh, in this area here it's particularly bad. We get a few more left, but not too bad inside. Managed to straighten this edge up a little bit. This thing had a, a real wow to it going down through. This edge here still has a little bit of wow to it, but in this area here, but not too bad. We'll get that out of there. And then up in this area here, I managed to pound out quite a bit of distortion. This is where the steering column comes in. It has a depression here and then a raise on this side. And then this was badly distorted in this area here. And this lip was uh, was bashed up and out. But we got that all pretty much back together where it needs to go. And then uh, this area in here is going to need a patch in it. We're going to where they cut uh, to put the muffler in. They cut this and peeled it back and cut it over here and peeled it back. So we'll be putting a, a patch in there and welding it. Up here the uh, section for the radiator cap, it's not too bad. And the uh, intake manifold is going to be fine. Just needed to weld, uh, file a little bit of the rough edges out of it. And back here is the, uh, the gas tank uh, inlet. That'll be fine also. So looking down this thing, uh, the hood Got a few little ripples in it here and there, but overall for a 1950, I'll take it. It's all salvageable, and uh, we're going to do a job with it. It'll look pretty decent. Well, we got the uh, paint off of the hood. Still has to be sandblasted yet, but pounded most of the bad dents out. Just going to be shallow bondo here and there now. I bought a uh, patch panel for up in this area. And uh, just waiting on the patch panel to show up now. In the meantime, I've been working on the uh, fuel tank. As you can see that's been all sandblasted. And this area here, I made a patch panel because this is the uh, the piece that came out. I don't know if you can see the uh, the holes in in the metal, but I tried uh, brazing it, and the brazing heating the metal just burnt the uh, thin edges back, made the holes bigger. So the only choice I had was to cut a hole in the tank and, and get this out of there. And I got a plumbing fitting of the 3 8 pipe thread that the uh, sediment bowl goes into. I welded that onto a patch plate. I formed the patch plate over so it matches the contour of the tank and then welded that in place. So overall, it's a pretty nice fuel tank. Over here are the uh, steering tie rods. And these are the new 
uh, drag links that I made. Had them threaded in the machine shop. These are brand new uh, tie rod ends, new plugs. New plugs in them. So, uh, jam nuts are new, the tie rod ends are new, the clamshells on the inside of the tie rod are all new, and the drag links are new. And I've got them marked here. I don't know if you can see it or not, left and right. So, we, when we get them set up on the tractor, we'll know which side to put, put on. So, we maintain the front end alignment. Anyhow, that's uh, a big improvement over what was going on here with the, uh, the broken tie rod end and the one that somebody had welded in place instead of using a lock nut on it. So takes care of that. You can see this one's got a bit of a bend in it. So we got all straight tie rods. And Nice tight tie rod ends and that should pretty much take care of the front end. It's February 21st and uh, starting to make some progress on this. This is the, the new patch panel that I bought to go in and repair this area. So we got to cut an opening for that and weld it in place. Kind of clean up where the exhaust opening is. And then uh, we get the uh, heat shield that goes under the fuel tank all cleaned up, paint's all sandblasted off of it. It's a little porous in places here. I'm going to use a little bit of fiberglass to, to get rid of the laciness in it and weld the patch in over here. In the meantime, we've gotten a few more parts have come in. I got this one in today. This is the uh, upper water jacket pipe. Uh, the one on the tractor has a, uh, a weld on it that's leaking down in here. And I suppose I could braze that and repair it, but this one came up on eBay and looks like it's in reasonable shape. We got a little dent in the pipe there that can be repaired. And uh, I probably cut a little off the, the end of the pipe where it's a little jagged from rust. But it looks a little more serviceable than the one on the tractor. And then here is a, a new exhaust muffler. Oops, that's a, a new old stock uh, John Deere muffler. You can see the, the bolt on flange here at the base. So we'll unbolt the stub that's on the tractor now and bolt this in its place. And then we got a new exhaust pipe to go along with it. And I just won on eBay uh, a new manifold to bolt up to it here where the, uh, the casting is no longer broken. So we're going to have a complete new exhaust system starting at the manifold all the way up to the muffler. And that will clean that mess up. So uh, got some work to do yet but she's coming right along. It's March 1st. Been working on the uh, fuel tank and the heat shield underneath the fuel tank. I've cleaned up the sediment bowl here. Get that so it's looking presentable. Get this off. And I'll take the heat shield off. The heat shield is uh, been repaired. I had to. Uh, weld in a patch in this area because the mounting point was rusted out. This side was pretty good. Clean that all up. Ready to go. And the tank has been patched. And a little fiberglass around it just to clean it up a little bit before we paint it. And over here we've got the muffler. It's all sandblasted. Going to do a powder coating on that. High temperature powder coating. We get the uh, exhaust pipe. I got a used manifold. It's in a little better shape than the one that's on the tractor, not so badly pitted. All of that's going in for uh, high temperature powder coating. And then down here, I've welded in a patch. This is the piece that I cut out. You can see it's been chopped away to 
replaced the muffler over the years. It's what they call a cut hood. So we're trying to make that look uh, pretty much like the original. And uh, that's about where we are at this point. And it's March 12th. What we're looking at here is the air filter canister. It was pretty badly dented. So uh, I figured out a way to, to make it look right again. I've actually put a skin over the outside of it and then welded the skin down the back side. At the bottom here we can see the factory welds. And then my weld comes up the back side. I've sealed it in at the bottom with uh, solder so we can't get any moisture up inside of it. And I think when we get that on the tractor nobody's going to know there ever was a dent in it. And down here we got a bunch of rebuilt, getting ready to rebuild the carburetor. And uh, this weekend I'll be ordering my rebuild kit parts. Here's your idle and load needles. And uh, we'll have all new gaskets and fittings and whatever's needed coming in for uh, to complete that. But I'm getting ready to paint it. Everything's ready for primer and then the John Deere green. Got a whole box of parts in here, stuff waiting for paint. And uh, the front end tie rods are all over here waiting for paint. And uh, as we saw the other night, the uh, the hood is all all ready to receive its paint. So maybe this weekend we'll start to put some primer on things. Well, it's March 30th, and uh, Sunday you'll be painted the hood and gas tank and the heat shield that goes under the gas tank. Tonight I put the decals on, so you start to get a look at uh, how the hood came out here. This is where we welded the patch in right over the steering uh, shaft hole. Came out pretty nice. John Deere on both sides. Over here we got the, uh, the air filter. It's got its label on it now. All the dents are out. It's looking like a pretty nice part. And we'll uh, walk over here look at the finished carburetor. All new brass plugs. All put back together. And over here we've got the generator. Finally got the pulley all painted for the generator. So that's all. Ready to go back on the tractor. Over here we got a little bit of body filler in the bottom of the oil that, cup. Uh, kind of borrows the legendary character John Henry. And here's the uh, ring, the retaining so, ring. It goes on to the, the bottom of the uh, air filter canister. And here we have the uh, insulate gauges. Somebody had replaced these over the years. And uh, just the other day, get the uh, replacement gauges in. Here's the new water temperature gauge with the white face and correct lettering. New ammeter. And last but not least, oil pressure gauge. And the other day, sandblasted the, uh, the instrument panel. So we get this ready to start doing the body work on it, prime it, get it ready for paint. So we're moving right along.